Over a hundred scientists and philosophers signed a letter calling a popular theory of consciousness pseudoscience. The main authors are not against consciousness research, most of them do it for a living. But they're singling out one theory that some think has gotten too popular. So popular that it could not only disrupt the scientific process, but also influence medicine and politics by convincing people that there's consciousness in an early stage fetus, or an organoid, or an AI chatbot. But opinions are mixed. A lot of people are worried that the critique itself could damage the field and even bury scientific theories of consciousness for another hundred years. The letter is short, and its definition of pseudoscience might be too broad to stigmatize one popular theory without collateral damage. But for some of the authors, that's a necessary price for the field to pay. There's a theory about the nature of consciousness called Integrated Information Theory, IIT. It's really popular, and it's one of the only theories people who don't work in the field have heard of. I remember learning, wow, this is the only theory of consciousness that's mathematically precise? IIT says consciousness is about the ability of a system, like you or a dog, to causally influence itself. And consciousness can be measured in terms of integrated information, represented by the symbol phi. According to the letter, the media, including big outlets like Nature and Science, have been celebrating IIT as a leading and empirically tested theory of consciousness. It all started at a consciousness conference where two of the field's biggest figures settled a 25-year bet. Neuroscientist Christoph Koch, a proponent of IIT, bet philosopher David Chalmers a case of wine back in 1998 that by 2023, they would see a clear pattern of brain activity associated with consciousness. Chalmers coined the term the hard problem of consciousness to capture the unique challenge of understanding the relationship between mind and matter. Chalmers took the bet 25 years ago, and he won. Still, nobody's found the neural correlates of consciousness. Philosopher 1, neuroscientist 0. The other headliner at the conference was a showdown between two theories of consciousness, IIT and Global Neuronal Workspace Theory, which I'll call Global Workspace for short. Normally, researchers test their own favorite theories using their own data that they collect and analyze. If they're alone with the data, they can massage it, maybe even a little p-hacking, and what do you know, 85% of experiments support the theory. But this was an adversarial collaboration where proponents of two competing theories work together to ideally put both theories to a rigorous test. They make predictions based on each theory and agree ahead of time how to analyze the data so there's no funny business. In this case, they used three different brain imaging methods to test the theories, including intracranial EEG with epilepsy patients. Global Workspace says consciousness comes from broadcasting information across the brain's higher-order networks, especially the prefrontal cortex, PFC. They predicted that you'll have a burst of activity there called ignition shortly after you see something new and update the global workspace. On the other side, proponents of IIT say the structure of posterior cortex is best for integrating information, because there's a bunch of areas that are organized like maps or grids, and they're densely interconnected. So IIT predicts that most of the action will be in these posterior regions, like visual cortex and the fusiform face area. According to IIT, these areas should not only be active, but highly connected for the whole conscious experience. So, which theory do you think got more stuff right? If you don't know yet, you might want to pause the video and make a prediction yourself before you hear the results. That's a great way to exercise your knowledge. While you ponder it, take some inspiration from our sponsor, Dr. Greg Dunn. Whether you think these neurons are integrating information or globally broadcasting, you'll feel like a part of the hard problem looking at cortical twilight. Meditate on the transcendent mystery of consciousness, or embrace materialism with the cortical circuit board print on archival satin paper. Check out these and other prints at gregadunn.com. Get a gift for the neuroscience nerd in your life. Maybe it's you. Check out these postcards. Enter the code BRAIN, B-R-A-I-N, for 10% off, and tell them you came from I'm Curious. Scroll down to the link in the description. Okay, got your prediction about the study? The results, according to Science Magazine, were surprisingly mixed. The research team released a preprint, which is a draft of their results. They, quote, confirm some predictions of IIT and global neuronal workspace theory, while substantially challenging both theories.
There was sustained activation in posterior cortex like IIT predicted, and a burst of activity in prefrontal cortex that Global Workspace calls ignition. But they didn't see sustained connections within posterior cortex, contrary to IIT. And they didn't see ignition in prefrontal cortex when people stopped seeing the image, which they should have, according to Global Workspace, because that's also a change in the contents of consciousness. The Cogitate Consortium who ran the study doesn't draw a final conclusion, instead inviting the reader to, quote, form their own conclusions considering all their predictions and evidence, with over 250 subjects and the most sophisticated techniques available to human neuroscience. They also invite you to consider the challenges in changing people's minds, since science is a social enterprise and the reader is as much a part of it as any of the authors in this consortium. The IIT side noted that even though consciousness is often considered beyond the reach of science, the group's open and collaborative approach to the project was paradigmatically scientific, which means really frickin' scientific. These people did not agree. A few months after the results came out, 124 researchers, including some big names in the science and philosophy of consciousness, published an open letter calling IIT pseudoscience. They said the experiments were probably done very skillfully, but they didn't meaningfully test IIT. They call IIT pseudoscience because they say the core claims of the theory can't be tested, and because it has weird implications about what kinds of things would be conscious. Stan DeHaan, the guy who put the neuronal in global neuronal workspace theory, tweeted that he doesn't agree with the pseudoscience label, but he does think the IIT side made pretty boring predictions. He thought the collaboration would force them to calculate phi, IIT's proposed quantity of consciousness. But Dehane says they only made trivial predictions that could have been made 40 years ago without IIT. This guy, Gordon Holmes, was mapping the visual field onto posterior cortex based on bullet wounds in World War I. One of the primary authors of the pseudoscience letter, Hakuan Lau, argued that IIT's predictions didn't seem to come from the theory at all, but they look curiously like a set of regions which anyone would have chosen for a study on visual perception. But were the predictions for global workspace any better? Eric Howell, who's both worked on and criticized IIT in depth, says global workspace made boring predictions too. Oh, there's going to be a burst of information in the prefrontal cortex when you see something? Thanks, Einstein. What else do you predict? Will they be breathing too? Paul Fletcher compared the situation to a field of people on various sized stepladders all arguing loudly about who's closest to the moon. Howell acknowledges that IIT has a lot of problems, including testability. But he argues that all theories of consciousness have these same issues. He tells the proponents of these other theories, IIT's problems are your problems, and the reason IIT's in the crosshairs is that it's the most ambitious. It's the only one that's so well formalized and mathematically precise, people expect it to make a precise prediction. That's why Dehane was able to ask, hey, where's Phi? I thought we were going to test your cool theory. So all consciousness theories are hard to test. On the one hand, maybe consciousness is impossible to measure and the whole field is pseudoscience. On the other hand, maybe there's still some value in theories like IIT. Anil Seth, editor-in-chief of the Oxford journal Neuroscience of Consciousness, says IIT does meet the criteria for science, including testability. Even if its most ambitious claims can't be tested, the Cogitate team maintains that they tested predictions from both theories and challenged them both. Even Lau acknowledged that the Cogitate project generated highly valuable data, so what's with the pseudoscience allegations? Some claims might just be a little too ambitious for someone like Lau. Lau's on a mission to make consciousness research respectable. He doesn't want to see his colleagues claiming that meditators are experiencing pure consciousness with no brain activity. And he certainly doesn't want to see the New York Times wondering if plants are conscious. Which brings us to the other half of the pseudoscience allegation, IIT's association with panpsychism. We'll explore that, the media hype, and the fallout from the letter in part two. If you want to support the channel, check out the artwork at gregadunn.com, promo code BRAIN, link in description, and go to patreon.com slash ihmcurious. Thanks for watching.